Well, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to yet another edition of uh, Holistic Health Hour. You are, of course, tuned to 1422 medium wave of the new Panhellenic Voice. I am Dr. Gabriel Edis, discussing, as always, our very, very precious health on a Tuesday evening till 8 o'clock. Stay tuned, my friends. Tonight, I plan to uh, cover the uh, biochemical causes of depression and what to do about it. You will not want to miss tonight's information on depression. Give me a moment to greet my fellow Greek listeners and I'll be right back with you. Kalispera sas filos ke fili, kiries ke kiri, isaste sindonis menis, sa dekatesere kosi dio mese kimata, tis neas panelinias fonis, metin ek pombimas holistic health, mas isas o Dr. Panagiotis Gavrilidis, mech tsukto iora, Μείνετε συντονισμένοι μαζί μας και εύχομαι να μάθουμε κάτι εκπαιδευτικό και προληπτικό σήμερα. Και συζητούμε για την κατάθλιψη σήμερα το βράδυ. All right, my friends. I would like to um, start off um, by letting you know that alarmingly talking about depression and tonight I want to look at it from a holistic point of view the chemical causes uh, and what to do about it holistically not just chemically but holistically as well in other words mentally and emotionally as well alarmingly my friends um, depression is very prevalent these days uh, antidepressants are the second most prescribed pill on the market today and yet a brand new study from um, the United Kingdom from Britain has shown the absolute inability of antidepressants to render any lasting cure or even satisfaction with most of the people taking them uh, leading the researchers to blurt out that frankly the antidepressants are just about useless. However, please never get off them without the express consent of your physician because of the severe withdrawal symptoms. Okay, so my purpose tonight is not to get you to get off your antidepressants, but to talk about depression in a holistic way. Alarmingly, most depressed people are not aware that they're depressed. Okay? So, left untreated though, depression can rob us of any glimmer of hope or happiness. Uh, it may prevent any chance we have of leading a rich, full life, yet it doesn't have to be this way. Depression is easily and effectively treatable with natural medicine in a holistic way, as opposed to the crippling uh, antidepressants with their very very nasty side effects particularly on the liver and kidneys so tonight we'll go into that aspect holistically in some people uh, my friends depression is triggered by a combination of factors if uh, we may put it that way uh, such of course as um, stress not the cause take note of depression but it is triggered by stress by financial problems by marital problems by job situations etc etc the list can go on and on in other people though just a single factor one single factor such as the loss of a loved one say or a divorce can trigger depression very much so acute deep clinical and chronic depression depression of course tends um, to run in families if one or both of your parents suffered from depression diagnosed or undiagnosed you are at a higher higher risk of being afflicted with it as well also certain types of personalities seem to be more vulnerable to depression than others for example people with a low self-esteem low self-confidence and people who are very dependent on others seem to be more vulnerable to depression okay 
Let's begin now by looking at the chemical causes of depression because um, we want to uh, move on and focus on recovery suggestions and not get too bogged down, too bogged down on um, the scientific terminology. All right. Um, orthomolecular scientists like Drs. Uh, Abraham Hoffer of the uh, Canadian Schizophrenic Association and Dr. Carl Pfeiffer have clearly and amply and scientifically demonstrated the fact that depression, my friends, has a chemical base, a chemical cause, a biological cause, a biochemical cause, in a nutshell. When we eat empty, polluted foods, as most of our diets are, we begin to become deficient in the basic nutrients the body must absolutely have in order to be in good health and free from depression. Also, there are allergy considerations. People who are allergic to gluten in wheat products or uh, to the casein protein in dairy products, uh, as an example, are often prime candidates for depression and bipolar disease as well, and even schizophrenic conditions. Sugar, white sugar, white sweet white poison, colorants and preservatives also play key roles, very much so. Copper and zinc anomalies come into play, and that is just scratching the tip of the iceberg when one attempts to chronicle the causes of nutrient uh, deficiency depression okay I want to go on now and talk about recovery suggestions rather than focusing too much on the pathology besides if you suffer from depression the last thing you want to do is treat yourself please seek professional help particularly a program that includes correcting the nutrient deficiencies with natural, organic, freeze-dried and enzymatically manufactured nutrients. And as I said earlier, if you are on antidepressants, please don't stop them without your physician's consent. He or she has to slowly wean you off it, if appropriate. Alright, so now let's look at some recovery suggestions that are holistic in nature, as I said, both for the prevention and treatment of depression. If we can call what I'm going to go into tonight a brain maintenance program, <laughs> if we can call it this, it is meant to serve, first of all, those individuals who have experienced one or more episodes of major depression and wish to stay well. This program tends to keep depression at bay and it can strengthen our psychological immune system, if we can put it that way, and therefore enhance our resistance to the illness. This program will also be meant uh, uh, to serve those individuals who suffer from uh, dysthemia, which is a low-grade chronic depression, right? Uh, low-grade chronic depression, you, you, you're just unhappy, you just tend to be blue all the time um, and yet not so uh, 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 acutely that you begin to show clinical symptoms easily you see it is actually a clinical classification uh, dysthemic depression but not anywhere near as bad of course as um, chronic and outright clinical depression so this program is meant for those as well, those who obviously desire to elevate their mood as well as prevent a major depression. This program would also be meant for those people who are experiencing a major depressive episode and wish to use these strategies that we'll go into as an, uh, an adjunct to medication and or psychotherapy. All right. Now, as we explore the material that we're going to go in tonight, think of my recommendations as just that, recommendations, 
guidelines, not hard and fast prescriptions, please. Each person's healing journey is unique, my friends, unique. It is up to each individual to sift through the available treatment options and discover what works best for you. Okay, so, first of all, of course, we have uh, to begin with physical care, looking at the situation holistically. We start with the physical, move on to the mental, emotional, etc. If we are to experience wholeness and vitality, it is important that we take care of and honor our body's needs. Being in good health will enhance our ability to do the remaining steps of this program. Now, a word or two on diet and nutrition. Good nutrition should support the optimal functioning of your brain and body. Uh, alarmingly, uh, an award-winning journalist that works for uh, The Guardian newspaper in London has is just come out, coming out with a brand new book any day now to be published by Penguin Books. And um, a few years ago, she wrote another book entitled Not on the Label. I can't think of her name right now, but those of you interested, send me an, S an, MS an, an SMS. Uh, my number is 076-189-6690. 076-189-6690 and I'll forward you her name. Anyway, the, the book not under the label, it is it, that one is uh, available in South Africa. Um, when my friends, an award-winning respected journalist of her caliber writes such a book which is an unbelievably uh, harsh expose on the rotten state that our food chain is in. We should sit up and take note, <laughs> okay? We should sit up and take note and realize, as I have been saying on this program for years now, that we have, we're already past the point where we can even hope that food can cure us or heal us or keep us in good health because our food is so polluted. And when you read a book like that by a respected award-winning journalist, Felicia Lawrence, is that her name? Felicia Lawrence? Anyway, the book, as I say, not on the label, you, you, you become alarmed at how horribly, horribly polluted our food is. Horribly polluted. We have to recover. We've come to the point where we have to recover from every meal we eat. We're not nourished. My friends, the average meal does not nourish you. The average meal poisons you. She mentions in her latest book that there are only a handful of places on earth, like Afghanistan, Cyprus. <laughs> I was thrilled to hear that. <laughs> uh, uh, our Greek connection, Cyprus, and another place, uh, I don't forget the name, she, a handful of places, and she's been around the world, where you can buy food that is not polluted anymore at the roadside type of thing. You know, pull up, pu pull your car up to the road curb and buy nice, uh, nutritious, unpolluted, organic, you know, fruit and vegetables. It's alarming. And this is not Dr. Gabriel Eady saying these things. Buy the book, not on the label. Y your stomach will turn over, okay? So, when we have come to this point, and we have been getting to it progressively worse since the Second World War, where food is actually harming us, what do we do, you see? We need to ensure that we are meeting our nutritional needs, especially depression-wise. See, depression-wise, you must be on some kind of natural medicine, like my favorite super blue-green algae. Right? I stock this wonderful nutrient. For those who are interested, contact me on my number. I'll give it halfway and again at the end. You see, you simply 
cannot do it any other way because major studies are now showing how useless antidepressants are so what are you what are you going to do to heal are you going to suffer for the rest of your life you see you simply cannot do it any other way other than to get on natural medicine you see you've got to give your body the organic minerals your body needs in order to recover from adrenal burnout which is a major cause of depression biochemically speaking you see adrenal burnout the adrenals need alive organic minerals not the dead inorganic minerals that you get in mineral water those are actually bad for you understand what I'm saying okay and don't try and doctor yourself if you're depressed you just can't do it you have to be under some kind of professional guidance all right but oh but now having said how polluted our food is you see there are degrees of pollution infinitely better for you to go to Woolies or some supermarket like that that sells organic food and buy as much as possible organic food not to heal yourself because you now need mega doses you see you need mega doses of the uh, organic minerals you need mega doses of the vitamins and the 50 plus nutrients in order to heal from any condition not only depression diabetes as well osteoarthritis arthritis osteoporosis rheumatoid arthritis heart disease doesn't matter cancer anything from cold to cancer and everything in between from depression to schizophrenia and everything in between so you need now mega doses but you must at the same time as being on the mega doses of natural medicine eat as much as possible organic food because if you don't you are going to poison yourself further if you're on a diet of um, potato chips and coke okay that is a recipe for disaster so you understand what I'm telling you here so now as you begin your road to healing your journey to healing you must as much as possible avoid preservatives food that is processed food that is not organic you must minimize the intake of chemicals etc uh, etc et you see uh, not because that's going to heal you but that's going to stop you from degenerating worse in your condition you have to cut back on the candy the sweets hundreds of studies have shown that too much sugar can foster anxiety as well as depression you have to reduce the intake of sugar completely why not you can do it use stevia instead s-t-e-v-i-a stevia all right reducing sugar of course also bolsters your immune system because sugar debilitates and weakens your immune system reducing sugar reduces allergies and cuts the risk of diabetes and reactive hypoglycemia so as I've already mentioned, there is a powerful and devastating connection, my friends, between depression and food sensitivities. All right? So as much as possible, you want to stick to organic, including meats, as much as possible. Okay? On the road to healing, as well as being on the natural medicine under the guidance of a professional. Allergies, my friends, can aggravate a depressive condition. Yeah. You, who would think that allergies can do that yeah who would think that allergies do not only make you sneeze and come out in hives and so forth but they can actually aggravate your they can give you depression hugely so allergies in fact can give you schizophrenia what happens is the casein protein in dairy products and wheat uh, and gluten in wheat products etc breads pasties cakes cause 
an allergic reaction in the brain and the brain dissociates with reality and now you see a chair turning into a pink elephant and so on and so forth and you hear and see people that <laughs> the rest of us don't and you are in a dissociative state right you're having you're now experiencing a psychotic episode because of an allergy because your brain is allergic to gluten and the casein protein horror of horrors okay and now you're classified as a schizophrenic for the rest of your life and no one knows why except us naturopaths all right the Canadian Schizophrenic Association has been proving for the last 40 years that that's what happens in schizophrenia. That schizophrenics are allergic to, to wheat, to casein protein. Their zinc and copper levels are not right. They're all topsy-turvy. Another, uh, 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 all the 50 plus nutrients that I'm talking about, okay? So there's an amazing amount of information out there for natural healing in naturopathy that has nothing to do with the medical profession okay although it was open-minded doctors like um, the wonderful Dr. Abraham Hoffer and Dr. Carl Pfeiffer who began the Canadian the Canadian Schizophrenic Association and they've they've healed tens of thousands of individuals from mental all the mental conditions including schizophrenia okay so I understand that that allergies can aggravate depressive conditions since both conditions are known to involve similar biochemical imbalances a little bit of medicalese now specifically low norepinephrine and high acetylcholine levels Common food allergies, of course, include dairy products, they're infamous for that, wheat, as I've mentioned, the gluten in wheat, corn. So if you think you have food allergies, cut out completely dairy products, wheat, and corn. Completely, my friends, okay? Okay, now, in addition, of course, to avoiding all these nasty uh, foods you must take a good organic multivitamin and a good organic multi-mineral supplement with special emphasis on the antioxidants vitamins A, C and E you see the super blue green algae that I stock contains all of those because it's a whole food right it contains the uh, vitamin A, C and E uh, and it contains the organic multi-mineral concoction that you need right also you need the entire vitamin B complex because it is known to maintain and promote normal mental functioning of course so it may be helpful to take a good uh, B complex uh, tablet over and above that you need calcium and magnesium of course which help to calm the nervous system and the, the calcium and magnesium are especially helpful to anxiety prone individuals all right deficiencies of the b vitamins as well as of uh, magnesium manganese zinc and iron are a huge factor in depression right as i say i stock these uh, organic nutrients contact me if you're interested because you see the nutrients have to be organic they have to be enzymatically manufactured. They have to be freeze-dried. In other words, no heat must be used in the manufacture. And they have to be from natural sources. Now, 95 plus percent of what's on the shelves does not fit into that category. They're not organic. They're not from natural sources. If they are, they don't have the big therapeutic doses that you need to heal. They're instead synthetic and dead, and in fact, they clog your system and all your blood vessels. So you need to know what you're doing. You can't treat yourself. You've got to be under the guidance of a professional. All right. I promised I would treat this uh, condition holistically tonight, so 
before the break. The last um, item I want to get into is uh, exercise and sunshine. Very important. Exercise, my friends, any activity, in fact, that promotes endurance, flexibility, or strengthening, any activity like that, my friends, is a natural antidepressant for the short term in a crisis. See, a, a, a burst of 15 minutes of brisk walking. If you find yourself in the middle of an anxiety or a panic attack, start a, go for a brisk 15-minute walk. All right? Jump up and down on a little mini trampoline. You can have that in your office, in your bedroom. Or the Americans call it a rebounder, a little mini trampoline. That's my favorite. I jump on my mini trampoline every day. Wonderful. Now, aerobic exercise in particular, of course, improves circulation. And why is this good for depression? Because it brings... Uh, increased blood flow and oxygen to the brain and releases endorphins which are the body's natural pain chemi p killing chemicals and also the feel-good hormones the feel-good uh, endorphins studies have shown that exercise works as well as pharmaceuticals in healing mild to moderate depression but it's not enough it's not enough you see because that just gives you a temporary fix to heal from depression, you, you, you need the natural medicine as well. Definitely. That's what's going to heal you in the long run. But in an emergency, when you don't have your super blue-green algae in your pocket, you forgot it at home, go for a 15-minute brisk walk up and down in your office, anything. Do push-ups, sit-ups, whatever does it for you. Okay? And of course, the only side effects of aerobic exercise are a stronger cardiovascular system and better overall health. The side effects of antidepressants, however, are legion, my friends, particularly deadly for the liver and kidneys. Do not be fooled. As little as three hours of exercise a week can reduce the level of depression. Even if you have no history of mood disorders, Regular exercise can profoundly improve the quality of your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Make no mistake. Researchers like um, Candice Pert, P-E-R-T, Pert, have shown that molecules of emotion are located not just in the brain, but throughout the body, you see. Our bodies were made to move, not to be couch potatoes. <laughs> and the only movement you do is your fingers <laughs> manipulating the remote control, changing TV channels, you see? <laughs> or your arm up and down as you shovel food and drink down your poor body. So whether it's a daily walk in a safe environment, or a water aerobics or yoga class, or dancing, very much so to your favorite music, Get into motion, my friends. Start moving. Start with small steps. Don't go nuts. Might also be a, a good idea to get a personal trainer. Okay? Start with professional help there as well. And remind yourself that you don't have to be perfect. So even if you have a physical disability or carry extra pounds, it is usually possible to engage in some sort of movement. So move, my friends. All right. We are halfway. Stay with us here on 1422 Medium Wave of the new Panhellenic Voice. We're going to go to a brief commercial break and we'll be right back with Holistic Health Hour. This is Dr. Gabriel Lidis. Um, those of you who, uh, pen and paper, quick, 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 I'm going to give you my number now and again at the end. Those of you who do, do wish to consult me or to ask about the nutrients, you don't have to consult me if you don't wish to. I also get calls from people all over the country, so I do telephone consultations as well. All right. Uh, uh, regarding uh, the the use of natural medicine in in uh, treating conditions, all kinds of conditions. All right, my number then is 076-189-6690. I repeat, 076-189-6690. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Um, Thapamitora filas kefili kiris kekiris to sinithis menomas diafemistiko dialima. 
και θα είμαστε πάλι μαζί σε λίγα λεπτά εδώ στα 1422 μεσαία κύματα της νέας πανελλήνιας φωνής να συνεχίσουμε το πρόγραμμα μας Holistic Health που αφορά την υγεία μας και σήμερα το βράδυ μιλάμε για κατάθλιψη. Λοιπόν, το νούμερό μου για όποιον θέλει να επικοινωνήσει μαζί μου ή να με συμβουλευτεί για διάφορες θεραπείες με Natural Medicine Μολύβι και χαρτί, γρήγορα, γρήγορα Μπορείτε να επικοινωνήσετε μαζί μου στο νούμερο 076-189-6690 Επαναλαμβάνω 076-189-6690 Μείνετε μαζί μας Welcome back to 1422 Medium Wave, the new Panhellenic Voice. This is Dr. Gabriel Lidis with our program Holistic Health Hour. I um, uh, began. We began at seven o'clock. We'll be going till eight o'clock, talking tonight about a holistic way to treat depression. All right. I finished off with exercise just before the break, and of course, sunshine, my friends. Do not forget to get some sun every day. 15 to 20 minutes, even half an hour, not not more than that. All right, now, uh, I'm trying to give you, my friends, some uh, uh, modalities, some uh, steps to take in emergencies, okay? Understand that it is nutrients, the nutrients that I keep talking about, that are going to heal you, heal you in the long run, in the long term. You've got to heal your, adren uh, your, your, uh, your adrenals in order to heal from depression. You've got to take care of your body with natural medicine. But there are things you can ta do in emergencies. And of course, exercise and sunshine is one of them. Another one is abdominal breathing. This, my friends, is one of the most powerful ways in an emergency to impact the emotions and the involuntary nervous system all right in sanskrit the ancient language sanskrit the word for breath is prana p r a n a prana which also means life or spirit of course now most people in our society society breathe rapidly and shallowly using only the upper part of their chests this is especially true now for depressed individuals. That's why I bring it up, you see. Especially true for depressed individuals whose life force is at a low point anyway. Now, abdominal breathing, also called diaphragmatic breathing, involves using your entire chest and abdominal cavity to breathe. You can learn diaphragmatic breathing techniques from hundreds of books on the subject. But basically, just get into the habit of being conscious of your breath till it becomes second nature. Okay? And practice first filling your belly and then your chest till that becomes second nature. You just got to do it. Nice deep breathing. Now, in an emergency, there's nothing to calm you down quicker other than the nutrients that I keep talking about. They also work in minutes. The super blue-green algae works in minutes. Wonderful to just stop, take a few minutes and breathe. Fill your belly, move up to your chest. Exhale. Fill your belly. Move up to your chest and exhale. Okay? Wonderful. It will center you quick. All right. Next, let's talk about sleep. Sleep and depression. See, part of staying physically balanced means developing regular sleep patterns that give you adequate amounts of rest. Once again, many, many studies show that most Westerners are sleep-deprived. Yes, my friends, it is a problem. It used to be, it is such a huge problem that in the United States, it used to be that if you fell asleep at the wheel and killed someone, God forbid, you were not charged criminally because you fell asleep at the wheel. It became such a problem in the United States that they have now made it a national law. If you will fall asleep at the wheel, 
they will charge you criminally with manslaughter or homicide or whatever I don't you know please not a lawyer I don't know exactly the legal terms they use okay but that just goes to show you how serious the problem has become for the United States to now make it law to change their law and you fall asleep at the wheel they, they don't charge you criminally that means it's a serious problem and a prevalent problem that means uh, too many people are suffering from it you see too too many people are sleep deprived and of course that is what studies show so you got to try and develop a sleep schedule my friends a regular time of going to sleep and arising most of the time I, mean, I know there are we live in the real world there are exceptions please but stick to it as much as you can particularly if you have a condition like depression and a cat nap sometime in the afternoon is wonderful for depression see sleep irregularities are among the early warning signs of both mania and depression these symptoms include trouble falling asleep trouble staying asleep early morning awakenings followed by ruminations thinking too much but even sleeping too much could be a sign of depression a sleep medication can be useful in trying to break a pattern of sleeplessness but it is only designed for short-term use my friends because of its horrible side effects and I mean horrible and of course its addictive nature sleeping pills in contrast a hypnotherapy sleep CD I have one I've designed one that I do make available to my clients works wonders works wonders instead of being on a sleeping pill okay okay now let's ne next look at metabolic the role of metabolic and endocrine disorders and I'll explain that medically is don't worry and depression endocrine problems of all sorts are recognized as having the potential to cause mood difficulties the most common of these of course is adrenal burnout I've done uh, two one-hour programs on burnout ask me for the CDs they will change your life believe me I don't want to go into it in detail now but it fits in here you see depression can also be caused uh, by hypothyroidism that means uh, an underactive thyroid which can be successfully treated using natural medicine other medical conditions which may excess which may exacerbate or even cause depressive symptoms are of course chronic fatigue syndrome candidiasis just about everyone on the planet suffers from candidiasis and chronic fatigue syndrome reactive hypoglycemia hormonal imbalances vitamin and mineral deficiencies amino acid deficiencies digestive disorders like um, IBS irritable bowel syndrome constipation etc etc I could go on and on and on that's not the purpose see often way too often people get the label depression but and people who they, they suffer from depression they, they, they have they're mentally ill nonsense they're just suffering from these endocrine and chemical imbalances that I've told you about tonight nothing at all wrong with them they're not loony quote-unquote or mentally ill the Canadian Schizophrenic Association has proven that for the last 40 years it's ridiculous to carry on labeling people as mentally ill anymore because they have depression or are bipolar or are schizophrenic they are suffering among other things that I've covered today and many others that I can't cover today from endocrine chemical imbalances etc 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 okay all right now I want to briefly tell you about the new science of 
psychoneuroimmunology, which clearly documents the impact of the mind and emotions on the nervous system and immune functioning. See, so because of this, this new science has taught us that developing positive habits of thinking and feeling, that this is now an essential part of the success of your brain maintenance program, as I said in the beginning. You gotta read something positive and inspiring every morning. Start your day off with that. Commune with the God Force. All right? It's a must. So this is another holistic way of dealing with depression. How else are you going to get in tune with the creative intelligence that runs and maintains this vast universe? You know? Now, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, for me and for millions of other people, is the most wonderful prayer I know of. Find it. Google it. Easily available. Memorize it. And begin and end every day with it. It will change your life. I want to read it to you. It goes something like this. The prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, not so much seek to be understood as to understand, not so much seek to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. The prayer that is known as the St. Francis Prayer. Simple yet profound. See, it provides for us a mold in which to cast our own life's conduct and character. It provides a kind of blueprint upon which to pattern our living in our thoughts and speech and actions within our day-to-day -day relationships with our fellow human beings and with all life around us. So the prayer of St. Francis is a precious document for us, an indispensable, invaluable frame of reference by which to judge our own lives as well, and referring to which we can do the necessary to bring about the needed alterations and modifications for the upliftment and purification of our own daily life. Because you see, the, the, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi will help you to monitor your self-talk or what I call taming the monkey mind. See, many, many research studies have shown that words and beliefs have the power to change your body chemistry. Think of how the words, for example, I love you, make you feel. Someone says that to you. I love you, Daddy. I love you, Mommy. Or I love you, my friend. Examine your beliefs about yourself, the world, and the future, and determine if any of them need changing. Examples of irrational and self-defeating beliefs include, It's important for everyone to like me all the time. <laughs> I must be perfect in all that I do. <laughs> I shouldn't have to suffer. Woe is me. <laughs> Why am I suffering? And it is my fault that I'm depressed. <laughs> you know. Since upsetting feelings come from upsetting ideas or thoughts, if you question and challenge the beliefs behind your uncomfortable feelings, you can become more and more free of negative emotions as you become aware of them. Many painful feelings, many, are often the result of distorted negative thinking, my friends, known as cognitive distortions in medicalese, or the monkey mind, as I like to call it, 
Some common distortions are all or nothing thinking, seeing things in black and white categories, the mental filter picking out a single negative detail and dwelling on it exclusively and obsessively. They're, they're, they're out to get me. I know it. They're out to get me. I know it. Yes, they're out to get me. I know it. <laughs> you know, disqualifying the positive, jumping to conclusions, making a negative interpretation, even though there are no definite facts that support the conclusion. Someone says something to you. Uh-oh. That's it. I know it. They're going to get me. Meanwhile, it's the furthest away thought from the person who said whatever they said to you. <laughs> you know, mind reading. <laughs> Arbitrar arbitrarily concluding that someone else is reacting negatively to you without first checking it out. Emotional reasoning. You know, assuming that negative emotions reflect the way things really are. That is, people, people, people think like this. I feel it. Therefore, it must be true. <laughs> Should statements and personalization, you know, seeing yourself as the cause of some negative external event which you're not responsible for. Chatter, chatter, chatter. Incessantly goes the monkey mind. Chatter, 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 chatter. Endlessly and ceaselessly. My friends, learn and practice to mentally shout out, Stop it, monkey mind! Stop it! Okay? Stay in touch with your positive feelings. All right. To remain healthy, emotionally healthy, my friends, it is also necessary to feel the full range of all your emotions. Even the so-called negative ones of sadness, fear and anger. Don't deny them. No, acknowledge them. The thing is to acknowledge them, but not to let them rule or dominate your life. You see the difference? Say to them something like, Welcome, old friends. I see you're here again. Thank you, but move on now, please. I have no need for you. <laughs> if it's your style... Keep a mood journal. A mood journal provides a way for you to monitor your moods and emotions on a daily basis, if, if that's your cup of tea, as well as the external and internal events that accompany them. You see, tracking subtle shifts in your moods can alert you to the early signs of a depressive downturn, and so allow you to take action to prevent another episode. Also, my friends, expect ups and downs. The road to recovery is an upward path, but it is not always smooth and steady. Often we will take two steps forward and then one step backward. Be patient with yourself and with the healing process. As the poet Jack Kerouac said, walking on water wasn't built in a day. <laughs> when going through hell. Don't stop. Right? Oh, my friends, look at the time. I had so many more things to share with you. But I will not be able to. So much more. I have to wrap it up now. I have to wrap it up. As you may have surmised from tonight's program, some of the things may have been new to you, but not all. There's nothing new or radical in what I have suggested tonight. The information I have shared with you is a simple, common-sense approach to living a healthy and balanced life. But simple does not mean easy. You see, developing and sticking to good habits requires persistence, discipline and diligence. Ask anyone who's quit uh, smoking or drinking. But the dedication is worth it. Having spent too many days in the dark house, you do not wish to return. There's one final point that I'd like to emphasize. No matter how many episodes of depression you have experienced, you, my friends, you are not your illness. Why? The label depression does not define who you are, 
but merely how you are suffering. If you start to believe that having depression makes you inherently defective, remind yourself that you are a normal person responding to an abnormal condition. Your spiritual essence transcends depression and cannot be touched by it or any illness. As the great 20th century visionary Pierre Tyler de Chardin put it, and I quote, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Above all, be at peace with your condition. Some people have diabetes, others heart disease. You get to deal with depression. By applying the, some of the strategies I have shared with you tonight, and by taking the miracle working super blue green algae that I stock, you can take one step at a time to improve the quality of your life. Ex expect your mood to improve. Remember, life is not always about fairness, but about how gracefully we learn the teachings of our unique path. My love goes with you, my friends, on your journey. I bid thee good night. We've come to the end of the road for tonight again. I invite you to tune in again next uh, Tuesday evening, and I'll be discussing uh, something else holistically. Um, right here on 1422 medium wave of the new Panhellenic voice from 7 to 8 p.m. A reminder that I do consult as a natural medicine practitioner. Those of you who do wish to consult me, pen and paper, quick, quick, quick. My telephone number is 076 189 6690. I repeat, 076 189 CDs of this program and past programs are available from me. Let me know if you're interested. Also, if you have a group that you'd like me to give a talk to, at work or at your club, six people or more, contact me. I'll be happy to oblige, and I do those talks for free. That's a good price, free. <laughs> okay, my friends, till next time, take care. From me, Dr. Gabriel, this is a bit the adieu. And for those of you who are depressed, and even if you're not, if you want uh, to hear me on a philosophical note, where I try and give inspiration and encouragement um, once a week. Tune in to 1422 Medium Wave right here on the new Panhellenic Voice. 1422 Medium Wave every Monday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Every Monday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Goodbye from me. Lipon, filas ke fili kiris ke kiri. Thasame sotelo sisakwam bismas ke yasimera. Thaime pali mazisas veveos tinapomini triti. Από τις 7 μέχρι τις 8 το βράδυ, εδώ στα 1422 μεσαία κύματα της νέας μας πανελλήνιας φωνής. Όσοι από εσάς θέλετε να με συμβουλευτείτε για διάφορες θεραπείες με natural medicine, μπορείτε να επικοινωνήσετε μαζί μου στο τηλέφωνο 076-189-6690, επαναλαμβάνω, 076-189-6690. Επίσης μπορώ να σας προμηθεύσω CDs αυτού του προγράμματος και όλων των προηγουμένων προγράμματών μου. Όπως επίσης δίνω διαλέστικ, ε, διαλέξεις για Holistic Health στην Αγγλική, εάν έχετε ένα group, 6 άτομα και άνω, που ενδιαφέρεται για μια τέτοια διάλεξη, μη διστάστε να επικοινωνήσετε μαζί μου, οι διαλέξεις μου είναι εντελώς δωρεάν. Αυτά λοιπόν αγαπητοί μου ακροατές, από μένα, τον Δόκτωρα Παναγιώτη Καβριλίδη, καλή σας νύχτα, καλή σας εβδομάδα. Και σα θυμίζω για το πρόγραμμά μου τη Δευτέρα. Θα μιλήσουμε, θα με ακούσετε πάλι τη Δευτέρα. Από τι 12 μέχρι τι 1, εδώ στα 14-22 μεσαία κύματα. Από μένα, αντίο σας. <Τι>